make sure I don't go over this season. I have four points instead of three, okay? So my goal is not to make sure I go over. You know, worst comes to worst. I'll look for some of you doing the Baptist salute. Okay? I know what that looks like. I'm familiar with it. All right? So uh, you, you do that, you let me know, okay? Yeah, if you start doing it now, I won't believe you, okay? So, but anyway, back in the book of Jude, Sunday night, we were in the book of Jude, and we were talking about, uh, in verse 9, when it says, Lord, the Lord rebuke thee. And we were talking about the archangel Michael there when he said that, about giving things up to the Lord, and how evil is, that surrounds us, and that there's evil that is, that is there to harm us. And uh, we talked about those things, and of course, referring to the devil, he mentions it there in verse 9. We're going to be picking up now in verse 10, and we're going to read down through verse 13, so follow along with me uh, as I read. The Bible says this in verse 10 of the book of Jude, it says, But these speak evil of those things which they know not, but what they know naturally as brute beasts, and those things they corrupt themselves. Woe unto them! For they have gone in the valley of Cain, I mean in the way of Cain, and reign greedily after the heir of Baal, and for, uh, for reward and perish in the naysaying of Korah. These are spots in your feast of charity. When they feast with you, feeding themselves without fear, clouds they are without water, carried about the winds, trees, Whose fruit withereth without fruit, twice dead, plucked up by the roots. Raging waves of the sea, foaming out their own, uh, out their own shame. Wandering stars, to whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. Let's go ahead and let's pray this evening. We're going to be talking about the blackness of darkness forever. Dear Father, Lord, we thank you for this evening. We thank you for this time, Lord, we just have to be here. This time we have the opportunity, Lord, to be able to be in your word. And God, I pray, Lord, as you have uh, directed me in my studies, Lord, that you will uh, be able to uh, speak through me this evening. Lord, mute my words and speak through me. And let it known, Lord, of, of what your word says, Lord, and uh, not of myself, Lord. Please, I pray, Lord, that uh, you will speak through me and just be able to use me, Lord. I pray that we as a church, Lord, as we've been going through the book of Jude, that we will just continue to uh, listen and be, able to, and be able to take what you've shown us, Lord, and be able to put it in our lives and be able to use it, Lord, to glorify you, use it, Lord, to better you and your kingdom, Lord, I pray. We love you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. So, verse 10 and 11 is talking about uh, these apostates. Do you remember these apostates we mentioned? We uh, haven't talked too much about them, I guess, in the last two times, but uh, before that we were talking about in the book of Jude it's mentioning about apostates and how we live in apostate time. We live in this time uh, of these people and we, then we started going through the judgments of those people, what they're going to be judged of and how they're going to be judged but I want to remind us tonight that these apostates, sometimes it's easy for us, by the way I want to make sure it's understood, apostates uh, someone that's an apostate is someone that is denying truth Someone that is de de denying truth, and not just someone that just, you know, we would say maybe you witness to them and, you know, they, just, they didn't get saved today. Or you witness to them and or they hear truth and they say, oh, that's not for me. Okay? That can be a form of apostate, I, I, I would say. But really, the, what the core meaning of apostate is talking about a, a someone that understands the truth. Someone that knows it's true but still refuses it. Okay? And which is a difference because sometimes in our minds, I, I'll, 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 at least I'll say my mind. Or in my mind, sometimes we think about uh, apostates that are actually people of uh, maybe the world, the world would use maybe the term of maybe a lower class. Maybe a, a, a lower character. But that's not what it actually is. I and mean, that's not what the book of Jude is actually talking about. The book of Jude is actually talking about these people that look, we would say, maybe look normal. And it's not, it's not the person down the street that, you know, maybe heavily involved in drugs and it looks like they're faced on the tackle box and all these different things. That, sometimes when we think of sin, we think of, we go all, you know, all the way to an extreme of what we think how that person would look. 
That's not the case. When the book of Jude, you weren't talking about all that. That's not what it's talking about. At all. Because, see, those people that I just mentioned, they're really no different than you and me. We can accept Jesus Christ as our Savior, or we could be done the same thing. The difference is, these people, these people are actually, we would say they look, if you want to use the word normal. And a lot of times, they're actually pretty religious people. And a lot of times, they're religious people that lead people astray. Because they know the truth, but they reject the truth. And they teach something else. They sound like they know what they're talking about. But when you really listen, it's nothing spiritual, it's all natural. As in the natural understanding of maybe uh, of, uh, of, of human behavior and things of like that. And the Bible gives them a name. The book of Jude here, God tells Jude and he describes them as brute beasts. That's how the Bible describes them. Brute beasts. These people are those people that, like I said, they're in religious things and they say and declare and they everything is what they know. Uh, it's what uh, they are uh, uh, pushing in a sense their agenda. It's not actually truth, going back to the Bible. So just a few things here as an introduction. Brute beasts, for one, these apostates, to, so we get a good understanding of them before we move on. One, these brute beasts, they do not know God. They do not know God. In verse 10 we see they are talk, uh, they talk about God, but they do not know Him. The Bible says this is, but these speak evil of those things, which they know not. So these groups, they speak evil of these things. So they're basically they're speaking evil of what? These things that are talking about, they're speaking evil of truth. And why? Because they know it not. They don't know God. They may come off as in knowing God. They may, you know, look the look. They may talk the talk. But they don't actually know God. Secondly, we see these brute beasts do not have salvation. We also see there in, uh, in Jude 4, going back to verse 4 in the book of Jude, the grace of God into lasciviousness. They turn the grace of God into lasciviousness. Lascivious meaning uh, without restraint or in, a, in an unleashed desire. I think if we think about it, now think of this to yourself, if you don't mind. I think we can probably all think of maybe, uh, maybe people we may have met. I, I know I've met a few. That maybe claim to be very religious, or uh, sometimes they are what we, the world would say is religious, as in, and maybe a deacon in the church, they may even be a pastor of a church. The fact of the matter is, they take everything in the Bible, truth, and they use it for their benefit. They're going to go towards them. And I know that sometimes it may seem like if you hear a preacher say, like, okay, maybe, maybe in some places, I promise you, it ain't that far. So I know I can think of some places within about a 15 minute radius from there. That I've met them, and I promise you, they fall into these, guys, these lines here. Because they push their agenda. What they do is they'll take the Bible, and they'll go, okay. Oh, yeah, God is God is love. Yeah, we'll, keep, we'll keep that. Keep that. Ooh, the sin part. Let's we'll take that out. Um, oh, yes, yes. If you, oh, yep, if you do this, you prosper. That's good. And they pick and choose. And what it is, so they're taking truth. They're talking like, but it's like we talked about. They talk, and it's really they're speaking evil of the truth because they're not telling them the whole truth. So these people, these rubies, they do not know God. They do not have salvation. And lastly, we also know they, um, these rubies do not know Jesus Christ. They know the, his, the historical part of Jesus. And that's what they'll mention, but you, can, you, you should know. They do not know the biblical Christ. Now, why am I mentioning all this? Because it's, it's important leading up what we're getting into tonight, but the blackness of darkness forever. So many important things, there, uh, there are so many important things in God's Word, and I, I think we all can agree with that. All right, but I would say one of the most important, if not the most important, topics in the book of, uh, the book of uh, 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 Bible and God's Word 
is eternity. The topic of eternity. I would say it's probably the utmost importance. It's also really one of the most solemn things in God's Word. This thing of eternity. So we know in John 14, 6, the Bible says, I am, or Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. And I know most of us, and if not all of us, probably know that verse. So we know there's only one way to heaven. There's only one way that's through Jesus Christ. And I think we all would agree that we all believe in this real heaven. And how, how real heaven is. That's where Jesus is. And it's all true. I agree with you 100%. With that, we also have to believe that there's a real heaven. It's a real place. These brute beasts, as Jude says, as I said, they, they're normal looking people. They, 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 they're maybe good. And they, they talk nice and all these things, but they deny the Lord Jesus Christ. And they deny that being the only way to, of, to have, that being the only way of salvation. So, as we go through these next three points, be with me and thinking, not so quickly of just necessarily a real heaven, but just true. But we also have to keep in our minds of there, because of a real heaven, there must be a real hell. First point tonight, we have the darkness of this world, which I know is a broad saying, but follow with me here. The darkness of this world. We have a kingdom of light in this world, which is Jesus. We also have darkness, and the devil is the prince of darkness. We read about that in the book of Ephesians, chapter 6. We're talking about uh, putting on the whole armor of God. We get to verse 12, and it talks about... How we don't, we don't battle against uh, flesh and blood, but against principalities, against uh, heirs, all these different things. And it says the rulers of darkness. It's referring to the devil himself. There's darkness in this world. Darkness is never more dangerous than when it comes packaged with light. Think about that. Darkness is never more dangerous than when it comes packaged with light. I'll give you an example. It's all the way to the beginning. Genesis chapter 3. We all know in Genesis chapter 3, this is where Eve takes a left forbidden fruit. She is convinced that she is deceived by Satan. But what is it that he uses to deceive her? What he says is take of this and your eyes will be opened. Light. The, the knowledge of what your eyes will be basically wide and be open to understanding, right? Darkness is always the most dangerous when it's packaged with light. And I think we can see this in our society today. If we talk, let's talk about, uh, let's talk about um, 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 dark, the darkness of alcohol, right? alcoholism, and, and things. Well, guess what? If they showed every beer commercial with someone hugging a toilet and throwing up, not to be real nasty tonight or nothing, the truth of what it actually is and how it could be, if every, if every uh, beer or wine commercial uh, or uh, you know, whiskey commercial, whatever you want to call it, you, just, you throw it in there, alcohol commercial, started off with them drinking and then ended with them in a body bag because they got a DUI because they drove drunk. Want to be baptized? Want it? No, because that's darkness as a whole. That's not what they show it. No, no. It's packaged with light. Beer commercials. Oh, everyone's always having a good time. Always go partying. This time of happiness. This time of joy. False joy. It's not. No, that's true. I hope we all understand that. That's how it's packaged. It's packaged as, oh, this is this is the only way to hang out. This is the only thing. This is the only way to do if you're going to actually have friends. If you're actually going to do this. The only, the only, it can't even pack it in a way. The only way you're going to actually meet someone as a spouse for your life, you've got to go down to the bar. Think about that. 
you know, don't raise your hands, but think about how many movies, even, even I would say, even going into you know, those these romance movies, right? And what do they do, right? Where do you, where, where do they meet? Where do they, where do they meet their guy they fall in love with or whatever? It's a bar, right? They're painting, in a sense, they're painting a picture of a, a Cinderella story, not in the way we think of maybe Cinderella as in the glass slipper and Prince Charming, right? But they're painting a picture of Cinderella as in go to the bar and you find the Prince Charming. Right? It's the darkness packaged with the light. There is so much darkness all around us. And like I said, I know there's darkness in the world, this world, and that's kind of a broad uh, a point, if you will. But it's everywhere. It's in, it's in so many things. But church, we need to be those lights that which our light is through what? Through Jesus Christ. We need to be those people showing truth. Revealing the truth. That's our job. Moving on. Our second point here tonight. The deception of these apostates. The deception of these apostates. In Jude 12 here, we read about a cloud, trees, raging waves, and wandering stars. All these different things. And what they were is these were, uh, uh, this was God, God was using this as an example, showing us something, and I'll, I'll explain it to you here real quick. We have the clouds, it's talking about the clouds basically being, uh, look like they're full of rain, right? Which full, when you see this in scripture, right, the world is taking, you know, rain as in this, oh, woe is me, I think of Eeyore, you know, off to the oh, woe is me, you know, there's the rain, and all these different things. That's what I think of all the time, I do, all right? But that's kind of how the world's pictured. Rain, right? It's just, it's just it's dark, gloomy. But the realistic fact is, and we see it throughout Scripture, rain is actually always a, a blessed thing. It's blessing that came from rain, right? I'd say maybe except for you know the flood, all right. But we'll, we'll take that one out. That was the first time I saw rain. And uh, anyway, but we see it being used time and time again as a blessing, as in the growth of crops, this promise of these uh, of uh, of um, Prosperity and things like that. That's what we see. So here in the book of Jude, when it says these clouds that they basically look like they're full of rain, and so we, it's like we see this prosperity coming, but then there's no rain. I think of this as example is using here with these hostages going back to those uh, you know, those preachers. You sent me five hundred dollars to seed money. You bless me. <laughs> You will have a blessing in return. A, a fourfold. Right? Oh, that sounds good. I write the check. Good thing that thing's going to bounce because I'm going to send it anyway. You know, send it. And I'm waiting. My fourfold. But no rain ever comes. Now, that may be maybe an extreme example, I would say, where that happens. Happens in churches all the time. You know what? I think if, if everyone if everyone in here will sign for the faith promise, I encourage everyone in here to do five hundred dollars a week. And if you do five hundred dollars a week, you, we will reap the rewards. God will bless us. That sounds nice. And then, and, and guess what? There's, there's people out there that say those kind of things. And they mean it. Just the look of the cloud being filled with rain and nothing actually comes. Secondly, we see here the uh, deception of the apostates. We talk of trees there. The trees looking like they have fruits. There's overabundance of fruits, which is also another sign of Prosperity, right? And being prosperous. But they don't have it. It's withered up. Even the roots. They have no roots. You ever walk around, you ever go into like a building or I always think of banks. You know, they have them. You walk in and something like, you know, the Christmas tree. You walk in, you have to do one of these. But you can't tell if it's real or not. It just looks, it just looks that good, you know. Like, man, is that real or is that fake? I can't, I can't tell. 
I remember one time Bethany and I were over. We were it was right after, it was soon after we got married. If I'm remembering correctly, so bear with me. If I'm remembering correctly, and we went over to a, our a lady's house in our church, her and her husband, um, and great, great people, and I love them dearly. <clears throat> went over, and Bethany was just it, it was it was it was like this out, you know, it was like the beginning of December, January time frame. It's cold. And we walk in, and she has these blue, beautiful flowers right there in the center of the table. And they like, planted and things. And Bethany like, I don't know how you keep flowers. I can never keep flowers. She goes, well, these are fake. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good way of keeping them, you know. <laughs> you know? And, but they look so nice, but they look so real. Sometimes, there's a lot of things, when they talk that good talk, it just it sounds right and it, it, it looks so real. But you find out they don't even have any roots. There's nothing to them. Now I, I don't want to have any show of hands here because I'm sure we all can think of some. There's people we've probably met that are like that. And sadly I'm sure you've maybe even met preachers that are that way. People that know truth. There's emptiness. There's nothing there. There's not even, no roots. Let me see the, uh, the raging waves. We see here, this is boldly expresses, uh, this is uh, the apostates here, the raging waves talking about their, how they boldly express their ideas and their opinions, really proclaiming their own shame. Once again, it's not ever going back to truth. It's their opinions, how they feel. And lastly, in the deception of the apostates, we have the wandering stars or fallen stars. They are bright and beautiful, but only last for a moment. I don't know about you, but it makes me think a lot about sin. Isn't that how the Bible describes sin? How it's pleasure for a season? That short time, it may it may look like wow, it looks like so much fun. Wow, I want to do that so bad, and it's fun. That short amount of time, for a moment, until you turn around and ruin your life, until you turn around and ruin your family. When that happens, I don't think you're thinking. That's yeah, still fun. I think there's a saying that goes, I know, I know I've heard many other preachers say it, and I probably always get it wrong when I try to say it anyway, but sin, basically sin will always take you farther than you ever plan to go. No one ever intends to go that far. You ask the drunk man down the street, he's not going to say, yeah, I plan on being a drunk the rest of my life. Yeah, I plan on being a drunk and losing my family. These different things, no. That's not. You thought, you know, all the other guys are doing it. All my friends are doing it. What's one beer? What's one drum boy? You know, it's it's legal now. What's what's wrong with smoking a little bit of weed? And I know that makes sound ridiculous to mention with all adults in here. You'd be surprised. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. These wandering stars are bright and they're beautiful, but they only last for a moment. Church people, we are there. There are people. Church, there's people out there that are hungry, they are hurting, and all they want and all they need is truth. The truth with love. That's what they need. But you know what they're grabbing onto? <clears throat> These clouds that look like they're bringing promising things. These trees that look like they're real. The raging waves, oh, that sounds right, that sounds right. Or even these, these stars, because they're beautiful, they're capturing their eyes. Oh, this is obviously how people worship the Lord. Look at them. 
I think of <laughs> me thinking think of that. Social media kills me all the time. My wife will show me a picture of you know uh, someone on Instagram or something like that, and it's just per- perfect, <coughs> perfect family. I mean, not a hair out of place. You know what I mean? Perfect family. And I always just I always tell them, like, yeah, that ain't real. Nothing real about that. Listen, they have three kids under the age of five. That ain't, that ain't real at all. Okay, that ain't happening. I'm surprised that one kid ain't picking his nose or something. I mean, this is, that ain't right. That ain't real at all. Because that's the facts of it, right? We all know that's not real. But, you see it, but they all say that together. They, they have something right. No, 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 let me say. I'm not saying we all think this right now, okay, when we look at social media. But guess what? There, there's a lot of people that do. Yeah. Do you know that this generation we have coming out of high school and things? This generation, you know, they're known as the saddest generation. This is a generation of, of teenagers from and middle schoolers. So you have a preteen and up into young adults. This is the highest percentage of antidepressants. Eight out of ten high schoolers on antidepressants. <coughs> they're known as the saddest generation. Well, guess what? <coughs> saddest generation. Look on Instagram. Someone's got it together. What are they doing? Well, they, they're, they're Christians. They say they're Christians. <coughs> but here's a picture of them at a ball game with the beer in their hand. Well, it must not be too bad. Look how, look how the Lord's blessing them. <coughs> These wandering stars. It looks beautiful. And it looks enjoyable. It's for a moment. It's for a season. It's for a short time. Church, we need to take a stand. Proclaim truth. Show truth. Let people see truth in us. <clears throat> not be two-faced. Not be one way at church and one way outside of church. Church, we need to be a Christian, actual, a biblical Christian. Not the world's view of a Christian. A biblical Christian. Because guess what? All that truth, as harsh as some of it is, and as maybe as light as some of it is, it can all be done in love because Jesus shows us exactly how to do it. Now that's what we need to do, church. Because these apostates, these brute beasts, as Jude describes them, they're there to deceive. Now quickly move on. Don't worry, these last two points, they're extremely short credit for us, okay? So we'll get through it. Thirdly, we see the doom of these people. And that's when we get into that last verse we read, the blackness of darkness. Let's talk about hell. Church, we ought not to be afraid of talking about hell. Because it's a popular thing, and it's an easier thing to talk about. As it is, and I'm sure I know I know I know you've heard of preachers mentioned because I've heard preachers mentioned in our Do you know how little heaven is actually talked about in the Bible compared to hell? It's a very small percentage compared to hell. Because the Bible is warning us. The Bible even tells us the broad way. Leads to destruction. The straight and narrow way leads to righteousness. Few that have found it. <clears throat> heaven, everyone wants to talk about, and it's a good thing. I'm not saying we shouldn't talk about it. We should talk about heaven. It's an exciting thing. I look forward to it one day. Remember, the Lord calls me home. I always tell people that people have people passed, it's hard. It is hard. They want to come back and you would give them the best life they could, they could ever have here. They want to come back. If they're saved, they know Jesus Christ their personal Savior, they want to come back. All these wonderful things we read about, they're experiencing firsthand. So it's a great thing to talk about. But when there's a real heaven, there has to be a real hell. And there is a real hell. We need not, not to be ashamed, we not to be nervous or scared about talking about it. Because we see, we can say all these things in love. True love will be warning someone about hell, not letting them go there. It's just like a, a child, you know, you see a, a, a brother like Charlotte's up here, and you know, she's doing her little water wash she has, and she's going right towards the stairs. She'll learn. I'm going to let her fall down the stairs. No, I won't do that. I'll try to, I'll 
I'm going to make it if I was here, right, right next to her. I'll get her as fast as I can to try to stop her. Hey, don't want her to hurt herself. I love her too much just to let her hurt herself all the time. It'd be different if she knew better. She was tied to stick. Those are ties going down to the stairs. He falls. He did something wrong, right? He knows how to walk by now. It's a little different. But I love her enough. I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop her. I don't want her to fall into harm. I just let it happen. And I think nine times out of ten, if any of us saw a parent do that, we'd say, oh, "Can you believe that? They just, they just watch this child fall, and, and he just went up there and tore it suck it up. You're fine. You're fine. Just get up. Scratch the broke her arm." Right, these are me. You may not say it because we're good Christian people, but you may be thinking in your head at least. I can't, I can't believe that. We're going to stand before God one day, and I, I, truly, I truly believe we're going to see people coming in and the judgment seat of Christ. Depart from me, you workers of iniquity, I never knew you. Cast into the lake of fire. Cast into hell. Why didn't you tell me? I love you too much. Church, real love would be the warning. It could be done in the right way. I'm not saying you have to walk up to somebody and say, like, no, you're going to hell. Nothing you can do about it. But Jesus Christ did it all for you. All you have to do is ask him. I'm not saying that's probably necessarily the best way of going about it. But you can do it in love. You can let them know. You can warn them. There's a doom for these people, and that's that uh, the blackness of darkness. And lastly, the deliverance of Jesus Christ. We have the deliverance of Jesus Christ. John chapter 1, verse 9 says, That was the true light which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. Jesus. Jesus, he's the true light. And I know we know that. He's the light of us. How we are able to be light, right? The Bible tells us in Matthew 5, five or sixteen, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. It's not talking about you and your good works and how, how good you are. No, no. It's the light within you. Jesus. Through your good works, they should see Jesus. Jesus should shine bright. That is our light. He is the light. And then quickly here in Second Peter chapter 2, verse 9, the Bible says this. It says, The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptations and to reserve, uh, to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished. Oh, that's the wrong one. That's probably why I didn't like that. It didn't sound right. First Peter. First Peter, I'm sorry. First Peter chapter 2 and verse 9. The Bible says, But ye are a chosen generation of royal priesthood and holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who had called you out of darkness into the, his marvelous light. Christ alone can deliver us out of the darkness and into the light. God's work is greater than Satan. So I want to surrender this church. Because I know sometimes I feel like the last message I preach and this message I preach, it's a lot of about the darkness, which that's what the book of Jude's talking about. But I want us to remember. God's work is greater than Satan's. Satan's work can be undone. God's work, God's work of saving souls can never be undone. I want us to remember that. Satan's work can be undone, but God's work of saving the lost can never be undone. Let's be ready. Because there are apostates out there. There are these people out there that are leading people astray. And church, we have the truth. We have exactly what they need. That a lot of them are calling out for, crying for. I'm telling you, I think so often about these young kids. These teenagers and things. Especially those statistics. Those statistics about the saddest generation. They are crying truth, something real in their lives. They need it. Not only do we need to tell them what it is, we have it right here. Don't, well, not only do we need to show them right here, it's also shown by how we live our lives. 
So I encourage you, I want to challenge you, church. Let's be the light in the world. Let Jesus shine through us. Because there's a lot of darkness in this world. Let's be the light that overcomes this darkness. Let's stand. Let's have a word of prayer. Time to take. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this day. Lord, we thank you for your word. I ask you, Lord, now to be with us. And Lord, I ask you now to give us boldness. Give us the, 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 uh, the strength and the courage, Lord, we need to be able to stand and proclaim truth and proclaim your word, Lord. Let it be known as the world that Jesus saves. Let it be known as the world, Lord, of who you are. The truth. Be with us now, Lord. It's time for Jesus' name. Amen. We'll talk to you next time. Yeah, the hymn, you can take the hymn number 318.